Let's do some drywall. Hey, look at this patch. I'm gonna put some two by fours in here. As you can tell it's a water heater above a water heater. The guy didn't want to remove the vent. I'd like to remove the vent, but I'm not gonna sit here and unscrew all the tapping screws and all the tape he has. This pipe's secure. He paid a plumber to come in to do this. I'm not gonna unscrew the plumber's pipe and redo all that. I don't get paid enough to do the plumber's work. So we're gonna work around this patch. Seems like it'd be more work doing it that way, but I'm gonna make it show you a simple trick that I do to get around these crazy patch areas. Take my measurements, I'm gonna cut the sheetrock, just mark it with my razor blade, mark it with my razor blade, mark it with my razor blade. Take my T-square, get my horizontal cut, my vertical cut. Put my tools away, snap it, keep it easy and simple. Simple, easy job in and out. All right, so I like to get my center of my patch here. It's gonna be right on the center, center. Now let's take my other center. Center. That gives me my intersection. Three and a half inch pipe. Circle, oh, look at this perfect circle. You can use a circle cutter, but hey, look, if you have this around, something simple like this, you can use it as a template. Use my keyhole saw, cutting it out. It don't have to be perfect. We are going to go around the pipe. We always tape around our pipes, so no matter what, even if we're off, we always tape up our pipes and make a nice, clean finish. Even the best drywallers are not going to be exactly right on the money. Oh, what do I do now without removing this pipe? Simple trick here. This is the trick I was telling you about. Look at that. Get it in here, kind of work it in there. I have the camera on my head, so I am moving around working. I am on a job. I like to get a bunch of screws in here, as many screws as possible. Cut this back, it's kind of rigid right here. So get the patch sit just right. Throw a couple more screws in here, make sure it's all nice and tight. You always want to put enough screws in so you know your patch won't re-crack out. That's the worst thing we can do is get crack outs. So now where the patch is going to meet, the new meets the new new piece right here where I cut. I like to put a 1x2. Look at this. My 1x2s. I use them a lot in videos. I always carry 1x2s. These are the secret weapons of drywall repairman. Now we get in our second piece. Look at that. Right on the money. I couldn't get any easier or better than that. You thought working around that pipe would have been a difficult, it's easy. The customer called me because he didn't know what to do. It looked difficult to him. But for a drywaller that does it every day, this is easy, easy as it gets. Bunch of screws, make sure everything's nice and tight. Then we like to scrape the joints, scrape all the rough areas, then we're gonna follow through with the fiberglass tape, fiberglass mesh it. I always scrape my areas before I do any fiberglass tape. Oh, that screw needs to be put back in. It wasn't fully in. Fiberglass tape. Fiberglass tape. I always use fiberglass on my patchwork. That's why they make this fiberglass. It's meant for patchwork like this. You, you always use fiberglass when you're doing small projects. It's what it's made for. Strong bond. Stuff will never crack out. Work around the pipe. Like I said around earlier, we keep... We tape up to these pipes, any type of pipes, plumbing pipes, any type of pipes. We always tape up nice and tight, make a nice perfect finish, no gaps. Sometimes this tape is stubborn to stick because I am sticking it to old drywall that's dusty. Sometimes it doesn't want to bond as good. Now I'm filling it in with the five minute mud. Quick coat, push it in the mud, push it in the fiberglass to get it in there and then I'll follow it through with a nice heavy first coat. The five minute mud usually takes about three to five minutes to set up. I like to check on it after the three minute mark, make sure it's setting up nicely. Once it starts setting up, you usually just follow through with a wet sponge and a six inch knife. This is called a slicking out, slicking out hot mud. 
You always want to slick out hot mud before it fully sets up. That way you can work with the materials and manipulate it. It's the best time to work with hot muds. Everybody thinks you sand hot mud. You never sand hot muds if you can help it. You always do the wet slick out method using a wet sponge and a six inch knife before the mud sets up. working around these pipes following it through now with the regular skim coat a regular joint compound this is just a laundry room it's not a three coat process two coats is more than enough for this job to make it even better than it was before